A new breed of hybrid-driven supercars from McLaren, Ferrari, and Porsche are indeed mind-blowing in their sheer complexity, computing power, and of course, their price tags. But do these so-called hypercars truly represent the highest echelon of road car technology, or has all that technology merely compromised three outstanding gasoline-powered road cars? It's the hypercar paradox, and that's today on Afterdrive. So for some car enthusiasts, it's precisely the gasoline electric hybrid systems that define the latest round of hypercars, the Ferrari LaFerrari McLaren P1 and Porsche 918 Spyder. And yet one could just as easily make a case that hybrid drive systems are the very least interesting thing about these three very expensive and very complex sports cars. Here to help me sort out what these cars mean to the hypercar buying world, also known as the .0001 percenters and what their technology reach could mean to the rest of us eventually, if we wait a bit longer, like a decade or two. Travis Okulski. Travis. Mike. Good to ha have you here on After Drive. Good to be here. Thanks for having me back. You read that. That's yeah. how you know where you are. Yeah. All right, so I want to show you two, three cars. Three cars. Yes. OK. Um, there's a Ferrari. Nice. Um, there's also a McLaren. Cool. Right. And uh, a Porsche of some sort. These are all the new newest cars that are coming out. They're what you call hypercars. Oh, wait a minute. These aren't the ones that we're going to be talking about today. But speaking of which, hypercar, supercar, is that? Um... Uh, I tend to think, and Raphael also at Jalopnik, we both tend to think that hypercar is a, um, doesn't mean anything. It's a made up word. Right. Because how can you have something above the top? Supercars have always been the top of the top. They're the top technology, the top performance, right. everything that you want in a very fast car is a supercar. So like the Countach, Diablo, uh, F50, yes. F40, F40, things right, like exactly. that. Um, um, hypercar is made up. So now the lower cars, everyone's calling them supercars. And above that, they're calling them hypercars. Right, but is it superfluous naming? I, I, think, I think it is. And I, I think, I think um, it was fine at supercar. People yeah. call them hypercars just because the numbers seem insane. Right. Um, I, I think we should just still use supercars. And, and really, what we're talking about today mm -hmm. is that cars, um, are these hyper, hybrid supercars that we we're talking about? We actually haven't shown them yet, as everybody knows. Right. Um, are they the apex currently of road car technology? And that's the question we sent out to, uh, to the viewers, too. Right. But we're going to be talking about that today. We're going to be showing those three cars. Um, but that's ultimately what we're here to try to figure out today, and mm -hmm. hopefully not too long, so we can bore the crap out of everybody. But that's, right. Um, all right, so Ferrari La Ferrari. Ooh. I mean, it's nice. <laughs> Uh, nice. Yes, nice is a one word to use to describe that. And especially this is its angle. This is the hero angle for this car. I never even noticed how long the nose is before. Either. What does it have in common with the next car, the, um, the McLaren P1? Kurs, right? Kurs. Formula One based sort of hybrid systems. Right. Um, More than 900 horsepower. Right, well, um, yeah. Various things like that. We'll get into more. Get that, into I guess. More, yeah. more of the details. But yes, exactly, right? So the two. Um, Formula, basically Formula One racing mm -hmm. intensive companies right now coming out with two. And then there's Porsche, right? right. With the 918 Spyder. Um, all these are coming out this year. Mm -hmm. All of them have uh, battery-based hybrids. Not the flywheel-based hybrid that we had seen in some Porsche. The, the RSR version of yes, that. Yes, right, yeah. exactly. Or also in the 911. Um, uh, GT3. GT3 version, yes. right. So Ferrari La Ferrari. Amazing V12. It's the Ferrari just makes, you know, V12s as art. It's insane. Right. The sound, all that stuff. Um, 950 horsepower. This is total, by the way. These are total horsepower right. figures with the um, with the electric stuff. 950, right? <laughs> I mean, come on, give me a break. That's a lot, right? That's that's a substantial amount of horsepower. Right. 903 yeah. for the McLaren, which um, has that's nothing to sneeze at either. That's, right. That's uh, a lot of horsepower as well. So they're they're um, ICE, right? They're um, internal combustion engine is yeah. a kind of a variant of the one in the 12C. Um, a little bit different block, different intake, larger turbos, yeah. that kind of stuff. Pretty substantial. Pretty substantial. Work. So yeah. basically, I mean, 900, 722 for them. Mm -hmm. um, 
we're going to talk a little bit more about the weight stuff because weight is kind of yeah. one of the issues. Um, and then, of course, Porsche, the, um, the RS Spider. Um, the, yeah, it's ba the engine's based on the 3.4 liter from the RS Spider. Right, exactly. And then it's got those electric motors, which do more, I guess, than in both the P1. Well, then the LaFerrari, the P1 has slightly the same yeah, capabilities kind of, as the 918, but the 918 is... This is more, they're, they're a little more boosty, yeah. kind of, and this is sort of a more uh, comprehensive system right. where, where efficiency is kind of what Porsche is going after also. Mm -hmm. 887 horsepower, you know, they started out in the um, sixes and sevens, like, yeah, and the then sevens, yeah. um, they boosted it because I guess these numbers came out, they didn't want to be completely. Now this 920 pound feet, this is a Chris Harris reported number. I obviously trust Chris Harris quite a bit right. with that number. If that number is true. That's unbelievable. Peak torque is insane, <laughs> right? That's insane. Right, and, and just consider all the computers they have right. kind of making all this stuff work. All right, so before we get too much into that. Well, we also, it's the bargain basement value of the bunch. Right. If it's for the poor people, the 918. It's, it's for, for the, the Poe, right, it's, exactly. It's for the, uh, it's the, the lower, this, the the lower echelon. It's the hypercar for the poor, right, yeah. exactly. So 845, 945 for the White Sock edition. We'll talk about that in a second. Right. Um, you know, these are kind of, they're not, um, they're probably not exactly what the prices are going to be, but yeah. you know it's 1.2 million euros right now. It's 1.5 million for the uh, LaFerrari, mm -hmm. 1.15 million for the McLaren. Um, so, but it's a kind of big price. I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars in price yeah. difference. Right. So let's we'll talk about that in a second. But I wanted to point out that we went to uh, our social media you, people, the people, y'all, right? Yeah and ask you the, the question that we raised at the top of the show, which is, are these cars the apex of motor car or road car technology right now? Right. Or are they compromised in some way? So Benjamin Oliver Wellington Nash, so we went to Facebook first. Where do you, what country do you think Benjamin Oliver Wellington Nash is from? Uh, no, I'm just guessing, I don't know. I'm so, not sure either. I don't know either. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna speculate. Yeah, we won't speculate. The future doesn't just happen automatically. He actually has an excellent point here. Mm -hmm. The future just doesn't happen automatically. We have to do things to create it. I look forward to the day when we have lightweight, all electric cars with thousand mile ranges that can be recharged in 10 minutes. So you, you, you have to, if, if this is the way, you know, automotive technology doesn't just appear out of nothing. Right. So you have to actually spend the time on it. But is- For sure. I mean, it's taken us, 100 years to get to the point where we are now. Right. 115 years, I guess. Or yeah. however, what was it, 18, whatever, it doesn't matter. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, we've gotten to where we are now, and we're at an unbelievable performance and efficiency. And imagine in another 100 years, what will happen to the car. Right. It's, exactly. The change's been incredible. Um, so, Steve uh, Schivali? Or Sh no, Schivali, right? Schivali? 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 I don't know. We'll, it's okay. We'll, 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 uh, we'll Hi, let Steve, Steve correct us um, angrily later. <laughs> It has become too much about chasing numbers and less about what made these supercars in the first place. And that's kind of, this is sort of the alternate side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> sure, shave off another 0.05 seconds in the standing uh, zero to 60, or add a few more miles per, uh, uh, miles per hour to the top, but who cares? I want a driving experience. So have we gone too far with the technology that it's actually taking away from the driving experience? It's not an involving experience anymore. These cars driving themselves now, we're just kind of there to help tell them which direction to go. Right, and that's probably true in a lot of, in a lot of ways. Um, Cal, Mummert, uh, Cal Mummert, I believe, also a longtime reader and commenter. These are the, or viewer, these are the prototypes of immature technologies just beginning to take hold. When mature, this stuff will be better and naturally, better than naturally aspirated forced injection and the rest. Um, it's a strong point. It's a great, I think it's a great point because that's where we, that's what, the test bed. We'll get into that too, that yeah. these cars are the test bed for the future. Really the, the, the point being that if, is hybrid technology where companies should be spending all their time right now? That's, mm -hmm. I think, the, the, the key. I think a lot of people feel that hybrid drive systems are compromised anyway. So right. why use them to reflect your highest level of technology? Right. But anyway, we'll, we'll uh, yeah. uh, also Facebook, Adam Joe, if the tech makes the car perform better in multiple aspects, how can you argue that they are not the pinnacle of road cars? All right, so there you go. Yeah. That's a uh, last word from Facebook. Um, on Twitter, Seamus Hickey, they have been compromised. That is, Seamus is not fooling around. No. 
The engines have more than enough power and the weight of the batteries is unnecessary. Our own Chris Harris came to the same conclusion when he was driving the, the 3,700 pound Porsche 918. Right. But that's also 3,700 pounds, but you've got the McLaren and the Ferrari, which both have battery packs aboard of around about 3,000 pounds. So right. there are different ways to do it, which would bring the weight down. Are we going to be able to answer that today? I don't think so. Right. But let's just see what everybody else says, and then we'll, we'll, we'll start talking about it more. Um, Jason Williams, they are the apex. They are limited but not compromised by battery tech. Lighter batteries will see a renaissance in road car tech. That's a strong point because how can you get the technology to be more favorable unless you spend the money on developing it, right? Right. But, you know. Uh, okay, cool. And uh, I think one more. We have Elias Karwashian. Karwashan. Hybrid hypercars have to happen. F40 and 959 uh, Ferrari and Porsche lead to RX-7 and 3000 GT mm -hmm. trickle down. Right. Who knows what 918 LaFerrari and P1 will bring. And that's so, a great point. That is the point that we, um, that we need to kind of consider today. Right. What are the technologies from these cars that are going to eventually trickle down, right? Yeah. So um, there's a Ferrari. So just, <laughs> just saying, there it is. Um, this is oh. So, you know, what is it about the LaFerrari that, that um, you know, what are some of the things about the LaFerrari that make it the apex of Ferrari tech right now? I mean, look at it. The first, I mean, that's well, not tech. That's not tech. Right. It's okay. just glorious looking. Yeah. Uh, but it's got the, the high curves, I believe is what they call their curves system. Yep. It's got the double clutch trans. It's got all their specially updated traction well, control Manitino management and stuff. with the yeah. Manitino. I, you know, it's interesting. So I think one of the things that, I, you know, it's funny because I, the things that are going to trickle down out of all these, right? Mm-hmm. Weight savings. Definitely. And we'll get to that more in, um, in a couple of the other cars, but it's all about how can you mass produce uh, carbon fiber to make regular cars just as strong and safe and yeah. also really light and uh, more efficient. If you're talking about Ferrari, you have to then talk about the trickle down from Ferrari to Alfa Romeo, the 4C, right. is going to be the first kind of affordable car. I mean, it's going to be It's going to be like 60,000, I think. Yeah, 60 there. and up, but it'll have a uh, carbon fiber monocoque. So it's amazing. It, it is pretty amazing yeah. to see that technology already have trickled down to there. And so you can imagine it eventually getting to the 30,000 Yeah, it'll range. keep getting lower and lower until we have like a Scion FRS made of carbon <laughs> fiber. Carbon fiber. Yeah. All right, so let's just take a look quickly at their, their hybrid, what their hybrid system is. Batteries on the floor, right? Lower center of gravity. Lower center of gravity. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, gorgeous sounding V12. Yeah. And um, no all electric mode. Right, because that's just against the ethos of Ferrari. Even though it probably could do it, they just won't do it because right. they don't believe in Ferrari being silent. Well, which yeah. I agree with. Yeah, and we could talk about how, um, you know, Ferrari and McLaren both are coming down from F1, mm -hmm. and Porsche is coming down from sports car racing. Yeah. So there is a little bit of a different ethos, as you said, you know, from, from being influenced by sprint racing to mm -hmm. being influenced by endurance racing. Right. I think that eventually when we take a look at the Porsche, you'll see where the endurance, I mean, at least it seems to me that the endurance racing technologies um, are more evident in that car than- Oh, definitely. I think know, so too, yeah. Th than, you know, the way that these guys are doing it. All right, so Mc <laughs> the P1. I like the P1. I like the P1 too. I like the P1, like the P1 a lot. It's, it's much more, it's not as classically beautiful as the, the Ferrari, yeah, but, but it's got its own air-shaped kind of. McLaren's thing. a newer company, though, too, in the, at least in this space. They've only, this is only their third road car. Yeah. So they can carve out their own thing. They don't have to harken back to the past. And that's what I love about it, is that they're all. But that's a nice picture of you. Thank you. Yeah. Where'd no, you get that bag? That's when I drove the P1. Mm -hmm. um, at my, by my infinity pool and my very square hedges. Yeah, <laughs> by the way, I, I applaud how you got that, that so, no, so I, square. No, my guy is great. I have a good guy. You got guy. a guy? I got a good guy. But so, you know, I mean, the shape is basically, um, from what we've talked to, talked to these guys, I mean, it's almost completely air, uh, uh, wind tunnel shaped. Yeah. Right? Whereas Ferrari still has, you know, has, has kind of had to add some of their own DNA shapes in it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talking about this, you know, 
Speaking of active aero, right? Right. So this wing is insane, right? So because it's it's an air brake, right? It generates downforce, right? And it by the un way, it ungenerates downforce. Yeah. <laughs> so at at a, what is it? hundred and sixty miles miles an hour. It, it generates something like thirteen hundred pounds, pounds of yeah, downforce. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, it's like F, not quite F one levels, but it's it's pretty damn close. It's pretty ridiculous. I mean, for a road, for a road car, car forget it. Yeah. It's unbelievable. This also, so the the, the pitch of the um, well, there's the a button tip. on the wheel. Yeah. That you push. It says it says DRS on it, doesn't it? So it's right. like being in the you're you're permanently in the DRS zone, I guess, of an well, F1 you, track. <laughs> you push it, the wing stalls. So I imagine people are going to well, be driving these in Manhattan with the wing going right. stalling while they're well, going down Sixth Avenue or whatever. But but so that's interesting. So trickling down, what could trickle down to a road car is active aero. You could have a like a Prius, right? You could max, you could you could well, reduce the aero to, to maximize your fuel efficiency when you need yeah. to do that, and then you can for a sports car, then you could add downforce if you're in a situation where you want, you know, some, you, you want some more traction. We're seeing it on lower cost cars too, because there's cars with active shutters in the grills to yeah. increase, you know, fuel efficiency. It doesn't do the same as this wing, but we're already seeing that trickle. And I think the new, I drove the new Mazda 3 the other week, and I'm pretty sure that they said it has that as well down right. there. More so sky active. Right. So it's already, yeah. it's already happening. So there's the interior. Um, you know, talking about carbon fiber. It doesn't have enough. Carbon fiber, and it's funny because you know a, a lot of these technologies feel like they've already trickled down to the point where maybe I mean carbon fiber is not ready for mm -hmm. full production prime time, but BMW with the i you know their their city cars are yeah. using much more carbon fiber than anyone had in that segment before. Right. Um, okay, uh. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting because There's this is this is their all right. So this is the um, the P1's battery pack. Right. And hybrid drive system. So the battery pack, which looks like uh, Ceausescu's castle in Romania. <laughs> in Romania, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it definitely has a, as like a, a Politburo it, building it, it, kind it of. Feels, it feels very official. It's <laughs> built, but it's, put, it's mounted, instead of on the Ferrari, it's very low. Yes. On the P1, it's low and wide. Here on the P1, it's stacked above the monocell. Right. So, but Ferrari, it's still. Oh, so the Ferrari one also weighs the least, 60 it, kilograms. It, well, it has to, I think it also has to do the least. Yes. Of the three of them, because the McLaren can go a few miles, I think it's six, seven miles on all electric. Right. And then it also, which I think is incredibly cool, it can make up for torque deficiencies during shifting yeah. to, you know, apparently make you go even faster in That's, your 900 horsepower that car. That is excellent. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like, you know, zero to 60 on these things are going to be... Two and a half? About two and a half. But it's really, it's going to be 60 to 120 where these things are going to be just unbeatable. It's five seconds faster than the F1. Right. To that speed. Yeah. The, the McLaren F1, that was the fastest car in the world right. for a while, FYI. Uh, and by the way, isn't it, um, this, this speed is limited at 218 miles an hour? I think so. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, that, um, which, you know, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so Porsche. Just, kind of run through this, right? So Porsche um, did not use the flywheel system as some, a lot of people seem to think. Well, I, I, a couple of people thought. A couple of people hoped. And a lot of people were hoping because that is a, a kind of interesting system. Of course, you'd have to not have a passenger seat if you want to <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah, you'd have to have a rotating mass next to you going like, was it 50,000 yeah, RPM? Yeah, next to you. right, exactly. Yeah, it's a little bit high. Terrifying. Um, this is a little pixelated. But anyway, so, so um, Electric motor in the front, electric motor in the rear. Yeah. Electric motor in the front is one to one ratio. Right. So it has to decouple rather than over, mm -hmm. than overdrive it. Right. You can't change the ratios. So they, they it has to decouple at like 100. And I think it's 100. 100 kph. Is it 100 kph? 100 kph. Yeah. Is that? Is it? Oh no, it's 90. It's, no, it's it's higher than that. No, it's it is higher yeah. than that. It's it's 146 something like that. That's right. Yeah. JF. So yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll check. We'll we'll fact check that. Um, but it does have a rear electric motor. Mm -hmm. It can that, go. That does more of the torque boosting and stuff. This one can go the furthest on all electric. It's 15, 15 entire miles. Indeed. At 93 miles an hour? Yes. In all electric mode. That's crazy because there's the first videos of the first rides in the car. You have them going around Barber all electric yeah. for like two laps. That was cool. Yeah, that's really cool. But a little bit gimmicky because. Well, all right, when you think about it, all right, let's look at it this way, right? So mm -hmm. what, can a, what can a hybrid drive system do for you? If you're Ferrari, yeah. right, you've, you can put in 
a, um, a high, high revving V12 that doesn't, that doesn't really get torque until, you know, 3,500 or four grand or five grand, mm -hmm. right? And then just fill in the, you know, just to make it easier to drive around yeah, town, just you just that fill in with the extra torque. Yeah. I mean, it sounds, to me, that sounds pretty legitimate. The P1 does it roughly the same, but it also adds the ability to drive brief amounts on all electric power, which is right. good if you're doing a track day and you're coming into the pits, or if you're doing, you know, round town for your shopping. Yeah, you're doing some shopping in your million dollar. And the P1 supercar. can also, well, the P1 can also do a range extended mode where it That's just true. forces the engine to charge the battery, which then uses gas to charge the battery yeah. for certain things, I guess, so you can then set a really hot lap. Well, the other thing is they don't need, I mean, b by the way, that, that the twin turbo, uh, 3.8 with 3.8 liter yes, 3 8. V8 already produces a fair amount of torque down low. Yes. So they don't necessarily need the same kind of thing that that Ferrari needs. Yeah. But um, let let's just say that the by the way, um, if you go back one, this is the Weissach, the Weissach edition. Weissach. Weissach, which yes. is as we said before, hundred thousand dollars more, but uh, um, a little, little bit lighter, lighter hundred pounds lighter, less lighter. So what, thousand bucks a pound? Yep. Cool paint job. Also cool paint job, and um, wings. Yeah. Well, these, these little buggers. I think so. Jeff. <laughs> yes. Um, the spats. Yes. So ultimately, though, the negative about having the hybrid system is is just basically weight. This is a thousand pounds, almost a thousand pounds right. heavier. And that's than the Ferrari. You could see it the most in here. So yes. a thousand pounds heavy, almost. I mean, at its heaviest, not the Weissach edition. That's thirty-six something. It's thirty-seven something. And then thirty-seven the, fifteen for the the Ferrari in the twenty-eights. So yeah, so yeah, this is the uh, the Weissach, uh, package. So let's let's just give a quick overview. Mm -hmm. What do we just see? A one point five million dollar Ferrari. Um, that's as close to a Formula One car as you've ever been able to buy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna disagree. Disagree and say the P1 is the closest to an F1 car. Okay. That you ever saw. All right, I'll, I'll give you that too. Why, why, why though would you say those two, there's that big a difference between the two? I think that it's a big difference because it's got the driver activated DRS, the driver activates the curs. Okay. It's got movable, but the wing, like the wing opening to me is, I think that's the most F1 tech we've seen on the road because you don't see, Active arrow that the driver controls. You see active arrow that is efficiency related. Mm -hmm. Usually, right. you don't typically see something to make the car okay. go. I'll give you that. Quick. DRS having DRS at your fingertips yeah. on the street. That's ridiculous. It's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. But you know, um, Porsche then cheapest. Cheapest. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sure. You could say, um, but. Uh, also different methodology, completely different methodology in making power mm -hmm. and using the hybrid system. Um, What's a more of a range? It's, it's range related, it's torque related because the, the Porsche puts out 920, if it puts out that 920 pound feet, it's right. 200 more than we've seen from the other two cars, which is almost enough to make up for the weight deficiency. Right. The car can go the furthest on a battery power. It's still incredibly quick for being the heaviest car there. Yeah. It's still under three seconds right. to the 60. Um, better efficiency, least amount of uh, CO2s, right? No, the CO2s. Yeah, we yeah. didn't talk about CO2s. CO2s. Ferrari's the, the <laughs> CO2s. <laughs> Sorry. Did you really say that? I did, yeah. Ferrari um, spits out the most CO2s. Uh, P1 is about half, well, it's the middle, middle, the middle, the middle. kind of middle, but um, the, uh, the, the Porsche is much, much, much less. So about half again from the, uh, the P2. Yeah. So if you look at, you know, it's really, it, it shakes out as the F1 guys versus the, the endurance related Le Mans formula, uh, Le Mans the sports, sports car, car racing. Yeah. Um, anything else <laughs> would you say? <laughs> no, no, that's it. <laughs> that's that's, uh, that's, all, you that's all I got. Anyway, are they, but have we, dis have we discovered, have we figured out whether um, these cars are the apex of modern uh, automotive technology for road cars, right as as we know it right now. I don't see how they couldn't be. Couldn't be. I think they are. Right. That's a that's a simpler way of saying what I just said. But I think that they are apex. They have the most tech. 
the most complex, they're probably still, you say they're going to be complex to drive. They're going to be incredibly hard to drive really fast still. You say the driver's taken out of the equation. If you've got 900 horsepower and you're driving a car at its limit, you're, you're involved. You're very involved. Well, at its limit is going to be, that's going to be a whole other discussion. Okay, so not at the limit, but if you're dri still driving the car around town, I still think, you know, or driving it quickly, yeah. I still think that you're going to be very involved in the experience. I think that that's... Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, th I think, no. well, ultimately, these cars are like, you know, owning a piece of, it's, it's sort of the closest you can come to owning sort of jet fighter yeah, kinds of, of tech in, and have it in your garage and exactly. be able to drive it around. It's owning the, I mean, if we say, like, like owning a Tesla, I guess, it's also owning the future for other types of road cars, because there are other solutions than, elect than all electric cars. But none of these have hydrogen power because that's not a thing. <laughs> that's, that's not <laughs> going. Not I don't a, think that's going probably, to be a thing. It doesn't look like that's going to be a thing. No, but, but you see, you've got the 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 early adopters always pay more to be the first to get something. Right. So these are the first cars that have you know battery packs that enhance performance by not a negligible amount, but by a pretty substantial margin over their regular cars. They've got very lightweight construction, especially in the case of the P1 and the LaFerrari. They're, I, I just, they're beautiful. All th I think all three of them are great looking cars. It's just the sort of things where all this tech costs money and eventually we'll see it trickle down yeah. to where we are. But right now I don't see a way that you can argue that something like an Aventador or something is on the same plane as uh, these. Right, it's also, yeah, half, half as much as the, uh, but also, using a lot of those technologies, mm -hmm. other than the hybrid stuff, um, the, the carbon fiber stuff, and a right. lot of the other, other uh, engine tech. Anyway, so what do you guys think? We already started the, uh, the thread on Facebook, so why don't you go and tell us what you think. Are these cars the apex of, of road car technology as we know it today, or are they compromised sports cars? Let us know. And that's it for After Drive today. Travis Okulski from Jalopnik. Um, thanks, thanks for having for, me by. Thanks. Well, you didn't let me thank you yet. Well, I'm thanking you. Thanks, for man. <laughs> thanks for coming. You're welcome. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, don't forget at Drive on Twitter, facebookcom TV slash TV is where you'll find all kinds of stuff. What about um, drive.jalopnik.com? And as I was drive.jalopnik.com, drive.jalopnik.com. We're on the internet. On the internet. Dot internet. <laughs> and that's after drive. We'll see you guys next week.